We need to tear down our walls and stop fighting. I've been in heaven. There are no divisions in the body of Christ in heaven. We are a family. We are family. And they all get along wonderfully. They actually love one another. And guess what? You are not going anywhere. Unpack your suitcase because he isn't taking us out of here. He's going to set us on fire. Because the word says the world will know us by our love for each other. Go out there and ask the world if they know the body of Christ by their love for each other. I've already asked a few. Guess what? The answer is no. They don't even like us. And they laugh at us that we fight one another. You're not going anywhere. Because that's God's plan. To have a time on this earth where we will flow and work together like breathing. We won't care who belongs to what church. We belong to Jesus Christ. In heaven, everybody is in love with Jesus Christ. Everybody cares about one another. Everybody knows your name. Everybody wants to help you. They have projects and events going all over heaven. And everybody wants to help you with your project or your event you're putting on. You're overrun with people wanting to help you. It's exciting. You really live in heaven. Don't feel sorry for people who move there. Stop grieving. You did not lose them. They're with their father who made them, who prepared an amazing, beautiful place you couldn't afford to make for them on this earth in supernatural ways and things that don't even exist on this earth. You should be excited that they went ahead of you. And don't worry if you got siblings out there. They, don't want, they won't mess with your stuff. They got their own stuff. They put more stuff in your mansion. You're going to have so many gifts, I don't know. There's no time in heaven, but man, it must take a while to unwrap all those gifts. Every family member or good friend you have living in heaven, every year on this, when it's your birthday on this earth, they go in heaven and get you a gift and put it in your mansion. And they sing happy birthday to you. I've seen them doing it. Most stories in each mansion, 40 feet high. Some are in the sky. Some are under the crystal sea. Some are on these beautiful cliffs in the valley of the falls. You get a diving platform to jump down and ride your 200-foot waterfall down into the river of life. They live there. There's things you couldn't possibly do on this earth that you can do in heaven, and you want to share it with everybody. It's not like this is all my stuff. There are no locks on the doors. Some people don't even have doors on their mansions. Someone may come in and visit you while you're not even in there, and you won't care. It's so amazing how the body connects in heaven. We go from being a body to a family. You'll, you'll be right near your family members. Trust me, be nice to them. While you're here, <laughs> you're going to live right next door. Isn't that wonderful? If you're married three times, if your spouse passed away, you've been married three times, you'll have three friends waiting on you in heaven. Nobody's going to own you. You're not going home as somebody's husband or wife. You're going home to your father as his son or his daughter. Amen? He's got the most perfect way of life planned for you. And I know one day that everything you see is going to be gone here on this earth. He's going to fold it away like a garment. Do you know why he's going to do that? 
because he knows where the ends of the scroll is. He caught me up one time and showed me how he made the physical realm. That one time there was nothing but spiritual realm. There was his house, a world called heaven. The most magnificent place. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is my sixth meeting in eight days. <laughs> but you know what? God wants you to know about his house because it's yours. There's plenty of room in heaven. And the harvest, when the harvest comes, multiplied millions are going to run into the kingdom. It's going to be fantastic. We have generations left on this earth. God always does things in generations. And this is a new time. He's not going to come for a couple months and show up and show off in us and take all of us out of here. There are seasons on this earth. We're in the springtime of the kingdom age. Mark 13, the fig tree. The leaves are just beginning to come on that tree. That means something new is happening. Life has come into the body of Christ. Man can try to interpret the word all they want to, and it's good to do that. But when you get divine revelation from the Father and say, this is what I meant when I put that in there, it changes everything. The fig tree in Mark 13 is talking about the body of Christ in the earth. The tree is there, but there's not much life in it. And in those scriptures, it says, get excited when you see the leaves begin to come on that tree. And if that was talking about the perilous times coming, why in the world would we be excited? And right after it says, get excited when you see the leaves come, because that means summer is near. You know what happens in summer? Everybody say this. The fruit comes. That is the fruit coming on the earth from the manifested sons and daughters of God. The miraculous supernatural signs and wonders, a long summer season, and much fruit will come from our lives. We won't just be revealing heaven on earth. The body of Christ is about to create heaven on earth. The spirit of wisdom is being loosed on this earth, and with it comes blueprints, blueprints and divine plans from heaven for architecture that looks like heaven, interior design that looks like heaven, fashion design that looks like heaven, things for children to do that have never been created on this earth are going to be created on this earth by the body of Christ. Our lives are not going to be the same. Darkness will be pushed back because the kingdom of light is finally going to rise up against the kingdom of darkness. There'll be generations of the summer season of the kingdom age, and then after that comes the what? Say it loud. What comes in the fall? The? Say it loud. Really loud. The harvest. Does that not make sense to you? Why would the harvest, why would they want to come in now? They're going to flock to the light. The light of God will draw them. The light of God, the glory of God in us burning. The, uh, Christ in you is the hope of glory. The glory of the latter temple will be greater than that. Uh, the first one. See, we're going to carry the glory, display the glory, the passion, the purposes, the fire of God in this earth, executing the government of God in the earth, in the spirit realm, over the darkness. I hope you're getting a good picture of this. That's the time we're in. 
We are not the perilous times. He cannot possibly give us the wealth of the wicked if there's no way to send it or spend it. You can't even put the perilous times and wealth in the same sentence. If you just, even in your own natural mind, line these scriptures up, you should surely see this is not the last day. So we're in the springtime where God brings revelation so we will know what time it is, how to prepare ourselves and position ourselves because it's revelation, preparation, and then demonstration. That's why you're here right now. This is just my introduction. That's why you're here right now to demonstrate the power and the love of God around this world in shocking and stunning ways that have never been seen before. Say amen. amen. Aren't you glad you're here today? Amen. I have a little CD called The Kingdom Age. I have one card marked a chosen generation for the youth to set them on fire and set them up for ruling and reigning. Copycat, one of the most powerful messages. The Father gave me revelation on many of the things that Satan has stolen. Images, symbols, things that go on in heaven, twisted them and defiled them. And he said they were his. And they're not. And this has got this. I've never had the power of God hit the platform so heavily. I gave you this in Washington, D.C., that God is going to take over. He's taken over the government. No matter what anyone here thinks, you can think what you want to. The only thing you should be declaring over our government is God's will be done. And I challenge every member of the body of Christ who sees this or hears this, stand up in your home every morning and say, I don't care what's going on, what I see, what I hear in my country, I'm declaring God's will be done in our country, in our government, on earth as it is in heaven. Lay down our differences. And I, don't, I don't care which group you stand with. I stand with heaven. And if you say you belong to him, you should want his will be done, not any man's. Man isn't going to take you to heaven. Man didn't provide a place for you up there. Your father did. You stand with God and what God stands for. Say amen. If you want to see things change, you start declaring that and get in agreement with heaven. Let God have his way in our country. It belongs to him anyway. The father told me I call America a Christian nation. Founded by me, grounded by me, it is my gift to the world. Amen. I have this amazing revelation he gave me on the Star of David. And it never, I, I've never been the same since he told me. I would encourage everybody to get uh, things with this symbol on it. I kept talking about, and God does love the Jewish people. Tribes, the Jewish tribes were not the first time you hear about tribes in heaven. The angels are created in tribes. There are tribes of angels. That's where it all started with the angels. They have a history with God we don't have. They were the only family he had for a while before he started sending us here and making us. And so I've seen this symbol on one of the walls of the throne room about 40 foot high. I've seen it on the hems of garments of angels, whole groups of angels wearing this symbol. I've seen it all over heaven. And I used to tell people, man, God really loves the Jewish people. And he does. But the father caught me up before stone. He said, I want to I wanna give you a little bit of revelation on this. So you'll understand and you will share correctly. And I give him permission to correct me. Everybody say, Father, Father 
I give you permission to correct me whenever you want to because you love me. Watch out now. <laughs> he will do it. He has no problem getting your attention if you tell him you want him to. He called me up. He said, I want to give you some revelation. And all of a sudden, a huge star was in front of me before the throne. And he said, this represents something very precious to me. It is my dream. You have dreams in your life to do things and things that you love. We only do that because he does. This is his dream. And he explained that to me. And those two triangles separated right in front of me. One was pointing up, one was pointing down. He said, this one represents Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then that one moved out of the way. Then the other one came in front of me. He said, this one represents body, soul, and spirit. It represents man. And then all of a sudden, they came together. He said, this has always been my dream. Us and man together as one. That's what he wants with you. That's why he sent his son. So that could be possible. That's what he did. He said, and when I decided to choose someone on the earth to represent me when there was nobody to represent me, and I chose the, the Jews, he said, whose sign and symbol do you think I would give them if they were there to represent me? Well, I knew the answer then. And I said, yours. And then he brought this back in front of me again. He said, this has always been my sign and symbol. That's why it's all over heaven. That's why you see it on buildings. You see it on the angels. He said, this represents my dream. And I want you to get that and put that wherever you can. He said, so when I chose a race to represent them, represent me, I gave them my own personal sign and symbol. Amen? That made me feel completely different about that. And he said, of course, that is why the enemy chose a star. The copycat. <laughs> That's one of the things on here. Even, even Father's own personal sign and symbol, the enemy just had to have a star. He could have picked anything else. Of course, this is defiled. But um, almost everything he's picked to say that is his is something that actually belongs to God. That's why he wants you. Because we're made in the image of God. And he wants to be God. But he is not God. Amen? So I have some really awesome things here. Uh, new things for you to receive. I do have a world called heaven, which is not up here. When I did that at the Brinson's in Fort Lauderdale. And it was a real sacrifice. It was their 8 a.m. service. And anyone who knows me, I sleep from about 5 till 10 a.m. every morning. And so I had to give up my sleep completely. And then I had another service at 11. So that meant no sleep during two services. It was so powerful. All I did was talk directly about heaven. And the power of God hit that platform and down front. And people ran to the altars. Because the father was pleased that I was sharing so much detail about his home to his kids. It was amazing. And so these, these revelations, I only give them if he asks me to. So I would encourage you, if you can't get them here, we do have our website, uh, which is almost finished. All the content's been given. He is transitioning our website, revealingheaven.com. It's not just going to be about Cat Kerr, the revelator who reveals heaven to earth. It's going to be about... Our corporation, One Quest International, with one purpose for one God, to create heaven on earth, which is what he wants. He wants us to have, he's going to send down ideas and inventions for the marketplace that have never been there before, so he can offer the world something besides witchcraft, 
in the marketplace. Something besides dark images in the marketplace. Things to wear, to watch, to play with, to decorate your home with. We are going to change. Say amen. amen. So that was my introduction. <laughs> amen. I'm going to take a little bit of time um, to share something called holy. It's how we're supposed to live our life. A lot of people think it's something. They try to put an image on it, but it's your heart. It's where is your heart? The word says, be ye holy as he is holy. Most people know heaven is holy, but, but that's actually a lifestyle. You don't have to worry about sinning in heaven, but holy is something you become. The blood of Christ makes you righteous. But you, yourself, pursue to be holy. People are sometimes amazed that I say that, but you need to read the word of God. Because they're talking to believers, and they said, Be ye holy as he is holy. And there's a lot of believers I know that are not holy. They have a lot of the world in them. They're very self-oriented. Christ was never self-oriented. It's all about laying down your life. That means your attitude, your rights, your opinions. When you have arguments with people, just let it go. You don't have to force or push your right because you're making yourself so important, so much more smarter, so much wiser than others is not going to draw them to Christ. It actually is not Christ-like. Being a Christian means Christ-like. He was never selfish. How could he be? He gave himself for all of us. His name was the Word in heaven. He'd always been the Word. Some of the hosts still call him the Word. He didn't even have flesh on him. He gave up everything to come here amongst the ones he made and die for them. Sinless, perfect. Walked in this earth just like we do. Tempted in every single way like we are. But he chose with his will to resist the darkness. You have the same ability on the inside of you but it makes a difference what you fill yourself with. Whatever you allow in your soul, when the word says guard your heart, he's not talking about your human heart. He's not talking about something natural. He's talking about your spirit and your soul. You guard what goes in there. You guard what you watch with your eyes. Your eyes are a window to the soul. When the Bible talks about windows, it's something that goes in and out of. It's not just something you see with. A window is not something you can see through in heaven. When it talks about windows and gates, those are things that open, that let things in or send things out. So your eyes allow things to enter into your soul. Whatever you watch is going to be engraved in your soul. Your soul collects things. That's why people suffer so much. If you watch a lot of violence, you're going to become violent. Even the psychiatrists know that. When they've seen some of the things that young people have done, and they find out they've saturated their lives for years with violent video games. I'm graphic violent video games, graphic violent movies. That stuff is not in heaven. Do you know God actually talks a lot against violence he does not like violence it's destructive when he is defending that's different when he defends us or the host of heaven defend us they're not being violent that's a protecting guardian thing 
He doesn't randomly just go kill people around the earth. That's violence. It's said that he despised Satan because he filled himself with violence. Get a clue who it belongs to. It'll show up out of you if you keep filling yourself with it. It's not holy. Those who want to be holy, you should not allow violence coming out of your mouth, coming in your house, watching it, wearing images of graphic violence. It draws the enemy because he loves violence. Whatever God despises, the enemy loves. So if you watch it or wear it, you're marketing hell. We were sent in this earth to manifest for God. That word manifest means, in the dictionary, to clearly and plainly make known by your words, your actions, and your choices who or what you represent. So you remember that every time you have a choice about what images you're going to wear or you're going to go watch. Say amen. This is from your daddy in heaven. It's about being holy. It's not you walking around with a sour face, judging everybody, telling them how bad they are and wrong, telling them they're going to burn in hell. That is not holy. It's the attitude, the actions, the choices. What you fill yourself with is what you will release from you that will make the light an inferno on the inside of you. The more you fill yourself with the light and life of God, even the enemy will know who you are. People will actually be drawn to you because life will flow from you. That you care and love the things that the Father cares about and loves. He loves people. He does. He actually does love his creation. He loves the earth, but not more than he loves us. He even loves the animals he made, but not more than he loves us. So that means you be kind to the earth and you be kind to animals. Say amen. I may be bringing up subjects you never heard before, but I'll tell you this. He had a whole lot more animals on the ark than he did people. And there's all kinds of animals in heaven, including your pets. Just wait till you get there. He takes them because you love them. And he told me a long time ago, that topic is not up for theological discussion. And if you want to discuss it, discuss it with him. You don't get to choose. Heaven is his home, and he'll bring up there what he wants up there. The animals didn't sin against him. He has almost no trouble from the animals. Compared to us, say amen. amen. They should deserve to go. These are, this is all this, what he said to me. They should deserve to go. I made them. You didn't make them. When he put Adam in the garden, the animals were his companions until he made Eve. They conversed together. Eden was holy. There was no sin. There was no evil. There was no death. There was no decay. None of that had entered into Eden. All of the animals could talk. Could you picture God creating someone in his image, putting them in this beautiful, holy, amazing place and have no one to talk to? All of those animals could talk until sin entered in. In heaven, all of them talk. There's no sin in heaven. Why shouldn't he be able to converse with his creation? Say amen. Amen. So holy is about how you live your life. Are you portraying the image of heaven? 
of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Ghost. They're filled with life, with excitement, with creativity, with fun. It's about time the world saw the body of Christ having fun. They might actually want to know him. Being holy is not just staying free from sin. It's not even considering sin. Sin shouldn't be anywhere in you, in your thought life, in your choices, in your images, in your actions. It shouldn't even be touching you. You are a new creation. When you get born again, you're not even just human anymore. You're supernatural. You have the DNA of God on the inside of you. You have a depositing of the anointing that Christ operated in. The Father takes a stone of fire from himself and places it in your spirit. And that's what gives you light. He takes a deposit of the river of life and puts it in your belly, in the center of your spirit. That's why the word says, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. That is a form of the river of life that flows from the Father. And I can prove it because Genesis 1.26 says, we are made in their image and after their likeness. And when Christ died and wasted hell on the third day, you got all the dominion and authority he gave us in Genesis 1.26 given back to you. We're supposed to be running this earth without controlling one another. The Father did not control Adam and Eve. We have a will. But you know what? You can live with that will and not choose evil. I have no darkness in me because I choose to have nothing to do with it. And I've gone from just not choosing it to not tolerating it. He's ready to release you to rule in the spirit realm when you get to that place where you won't tolerate it. You've stopped warring against the flesh. Holy doesn't war against the flesh. There's something else you can write down. Holy has no darkness. Holy does not have selfish pride on the inside of you. You're humble. Holy has life in it. It's got creativity. Holy makes you creative. Because you have no outside junk coming into you to clutter up your mind. It releases the mind of Christ inside of you. He was holy on this earth. He chose that. You choose it. By the way, I have another revelation to give you. Many are called, but few are chosen. You want to know how the few get chosen? They choose to be chosen. He didn't father up there saying, well, I want them and them, but I don't want them or them. They're not worthy. No. You choose to be chosen by saying it. And God, the Father, is offering to the body of Christ. You were called to manifest for him in this earth and do great things, unseen, unspoken of things, never known in the earth. But you have to choose to do it. Holy hurts hell. The Holy Spirit gave me that and said, I will give you three words to show you why you should live holy. It hurts hell. They don't want you to live like that. You are messing up their plans. You are pushing darkness out of your life. You're causing destruction to strongholds that have been built in the atmosphere over you in your home. They don't want you to be holy. 
That's why there's so much junk in the world. That's why he's found so many, made so many false religions. He'll give you anything you take as long as you don't take God. Because they can't be holy. Other religions give you uh, the word holy. You have to work to get there. But it has nothing to do with what holy is. It's not a job. It's a lifestyle. Holy is a lifestyle. It's not something you try. People try it. It didn't work. No. They never really gave themselves to God. They're not pursuing him. Holy craves the father. The Father, the presence of the Lord. You crave it more than the air you breathe. And if you don't know what that hunger is, it burns to be with him. Nothing in this world is worth missing being with him and living with him in eternity. You will have no future in hell. Living holy hurts hell. Literally, you burn the enemy when you live holy. It causes them pain. It causes them confusion. They can't squish you, make you scream, fill you with fear, make you fight. Holy doesn't have the flesh showing up and ruling. Your spirit man rules you. You need to feed your spirit. Because if you're starving it, that flesh is going to take you over. To be carnally or fleshly minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life. He put before us life and death. Choose life. Life and death. The tongue has the power of life and death. Speak life. Isn't it amazing how many times he mentions life in the word? Christ was the light of life in us. Is that correct? Is that what the word says? How about that light in life in the same sentence? I don't see darkness in there anywhere. Holy is no darkness. You choose holy. It is the last thing the enemy wants you to choose. And that's why he gets our flesh stirred up and angry and offended. And then we don't want to forgive. And then we reject people. And then a spirit of rejectness takes over us. And we'll do things to cause people to reject us. And he gets you in a pit, in a big circle. And yet any moment in your life you choose, there's choose again. Your will can get you out of that mess. You chose with your will to take it. You choose with your will to get rid of it. Because whatever you're thinking about or reading or listening to or saying with your own mouth is feeding your soul. Holy likes you you like yourself you live holy you're happy with you you're actually happy holy has joy in it okay you live in unholy they have a false happiness for a short period of time but most people who live unholy are extremely miserable because there's no life in you and your light has been covered up. So holy has joy. Holy has fun. Holy is fun. Living holy is fun. You don't have any darkness. You could care less about the stuff of the enemy. You're not mad at anybody. You don't get up with worries and concerns and fear in you. You have no fear. Holy has no fear. I'm actually showing you the character of Christ. He had no fear. 
And actually, he had more fun than most people, and that's what offended the religious leadership. They didn't like him because he knew more and had more wisdom on the inside of him than all of them did together, and yet he displayed fun openly, and they didn't like it because that wasn't being religious. You can't have fun and be holy. I've actually had people tell me that. I don't like your pink hair. It's heaven culture. Holy has fun. Holy is not concerned about what other people think about you. Jesus lived holy. He was never concerned about what other people's opinions were. He was never afraid of the face of man. He never tolerated darkness near him. He had no lack in his life. Holy is not being poor. This is a revelation on what holy is. Holy is not being poor. Heaven is holy. More bling and wealth than this world could ever even imagine. They have treasures you don't even know or understand about up there. There is no lack in heaven. Most of the people the Father used in the Bible were rich. They weren't poor. Christ became poor the moment he left heaven. He was not poor on this earth. You don't need a treasurer to carry your nickels. And most of the cities they went into, according to the word, Jesus bought food for the whole crowd. The only time he multiplied the food was because there was nowhere to buy any. What did the disciples say to him when he said, sit down, we're going to feed them? Well, there's nowhere to buy food. They didn't say they didn't have the money to feed the 5,000. They said there was no food to buy for them. His clothing was so wealthy and rich, they gambled for it at the cross. He was a master carpenter. Holy is highly skilled. Every one of these things, why would you not want to be holy? Holy is displaying heaven on earth. That's why all those things have to be included. They have to be. Holy is not wearing rags, sitting in a corner, humming all the time to yourself. Never mixing with human race. Never eating delicious food. That is not holy. That's crazy. That was not Jesus on this earth. When his daddy sent the gold and the wealth and the riches to him when he was born, those were not three kings on three camels. They were caravans from three different countries. It took them two years to reach him. He wasn't a little baby. Two years across the desert, people, a king. Would you go alone? Or would you take servants and food and tents? and gifts, and food for the animals. How long do you think those caravans were? They didn't give him a piece of gold in a jar of something. His daddy sent supply for his entire life on this earth. And when he said, get up and go into Egypt to protect yourself, they didn't have to disappear in the middle of the night on a donkey. They had a caravan themselves. And his tutors were the greatest in Egypt. What do you think why he confounded them in the temple? 
He was raised as a child like us. He had teachers. He had the best. They had one of the best places to live in. His son may have been born in a manger, but he didn't stay in the manger. And Joseph was a master carpenter. He gave his son a gift before he sent him, just like he did you. Carpentry. If the son of God was going to be raised in a gift, do you think he would send him to a crummy carpenter? And you know why Mary and Joseph weren't stoned? It wasn't because they thought they were so holy. It had nothing to do with that. According to their laws, when Mary showed up pregnant, they should have both been stoned. But I promise you, the government of that city, the leaders, the businessmen, the doctors, the lawyers, the publicans, were not willing to lose the best carpenter they had in the city, or they would have had crummy houses and crummy furniture. His gift made room for him and took him before a great man, and they weren't willing to lose the only good master carpenter they had in the city. So they extended great favor and did something they would have never done before, and they allowed them to be protected. How about that? That's called revelation. And Joseph raised Jesus in his natural gift. And he was just as good as Joseph, probably better. Mary had one of the best houses in the city. And she had a big house. Because she had lots of kids. She had the best furniture. She had flower beds that probably extended way beyond her property line. Because Jesus loves flowers. Holy loves all of God's creation. Jesus loved the flowers, the trees, the mountains. How many times did he go to the mountains? Sometimes he went there just because he loved it. He loved what he made. He loved it. He loves flowers in heaven. Why do you think his father made sure he was in the garden tomb and it was spring when he was resurrected. He could have picked any time because when his son came from hell back up into the tomb, got his body, it was glorified. The angels rolled away the stone and he stepped out into a magnificent aroma of spring in full bloom. And he was so overwhelmed, he stepped into the flower beds and stayed there for some time. And later when Mary was looking for him, she presumed he was the gardener because he was in the flower beds. Smelling the roses. That whole thing, take time to smell the roses, that comes from Jesus. When she saw him, he was bent over with his face embedded in the flowers. I know, he took me back and showed me. How simple is revelation that everybody everywhere has tried to figure out why she didn't recognize him. Why? It's not that she couldn't recognize him. It literally says she presumed he was the gardener. Was he dressed like a, a gardener? Did he have a rake? Did he have a hoe? No, he was in the flowers. Nobody stepped in the flower beds except the gardener who was tending them. Holy loves what God made. You are supposed to enjoy hello on the seventh day. Did he sit down on a rock and do nothing? It says he enjoyed all of his creation. Why did he make a garden of Eden and put it on the earth? It could have just been Eden. It was a garden because the Lord of glory loves flowers. Why is he called the Rose of Sharon and the Lily of the Valley? Revelation makes it so simple. Holy enjoys all that God made because his son did. Jesus loved it. Doesn't holy sound very appetizing to you right now? Yeah, because God's trying to wipe out what man assumes it is and what the enemy wants you to believe it is. 
Holy is the best place you want to be. And I love it. I love being holy. Hell does not like me. They don't like me. Nothing that is consumed or controlled by hell doesn't like me. I am dangerous. Because I am holy, but I have fun. That is heaven culture. They are not used to that. They don't want that in the earth. Too bad. Because holy is coming to the body of Christ. But you have to choose it. Start today. People run around, how can I do this? I just don't know anybody. I don't have anybody to pray for me. You don't need them. Because you have to choose it. They can't choose it for you. Get it home in front of your mirror and say, I want to get rid of everything in me that belongs to the world. I don't want darkness in me. I don't want it in my house. This day I am going to choose to start becoming holy. By the, word, by the way, every time the Father put the word be in the word, that is a state of existence. Christ became poor that you might be rich. He desires above all things that you prosper and be in health. That's divine health. But there's a requirement. Even as your soul prospers, guess what? Holy has a prosperous soul. Your soul has to be prospering. It can't help it. If you are holy, it's going to prosper. Holy loves the word of God. It's part of your diet. Your diet should be the word of God, the presence of God, the life of God, the love of God. Mingling with God's people. First, you be friends with the house of God and help the house of God. You help our brothers and sisters before you help the world. That's what the word says. It says that. You need to read the word. Remember, part of holy is loving it. And when you open it, say, Holy Spirit, bring revelation, make it alive. Every time you open it, say that, and he will do it. So holy is a lifestyle. It's called heaven culture. That's how he wanted us to live in the earth. Now you can see it's making a difference. Say amen. You choose it. It's worth everything. You think you have to give up. Holy is loving your own family. Even when they act up. Even when they make mistakes. Even when they don't like you. That's holy when you choose love. Love is a weapon. It is a powerful weapon. The enemy also hates love. It's what took him out of heaven. When God was done with Lucifer testing every angel in heaven, they only got to choose once. Aren't you glad you get to choose more than once? When they chose the, the created being over the creator, they ended the relationship with the father. They were cast out with Lucifer. The father sent a lightning bolt from himself. He didn't even use the army. How about this? He had an army and there was no one to fight. Don't you wonder what was going on in that army's mind? Powerful 80 to 90 foot warriors. Some look like steel, like stone with eyes all over in them. They are weapons honed to a fine point, and they had no one to fight. Well, the day Lucifer showed up at Michael's headquarters, trying to get them all down to bow down to him and follow him, they knew exactly who they would be fighting. Michael did not cry when he got a hold of Lucifer, and the father sent a lightning bolt from himself and took him out of heaven. He celebrated because he didn't like darkness either. Love is a weapon, and we have a new weapon during this time on earth. The body of Christ has a new weapon. It's called fun. 
I already explained that holy is fun. It's fun. You are so free from you, from the cares of the world, from the enemy. Are you kidding? From Earth's economy, God can create your own economy for you. We're getting downloads to heaven in the economy and our finances are going to change. Say amen. amen. If you've been an intercessor for 20 years in your closet, get out and go have some fun. Because holy prays and plays. Amen. Holy is very important. It is a powerful way to live in this life. And if you want to manifest for him, be holy. It's a state of existence. Amen. Please stand up. We're going to declare some things. Amen. I want you to never be the same again. I have actually never given this message anywhere before. It's a new revelation. It's how I've been living my life for quite a while. But the Holy Spirit wants it given so people have a clear understanding. Revelation is so important in this day. Okay, God's going to give revelation from himself. If you want it, you ask for it. Amen. In the kingdom age, we will live by revelation first. And if you have a business or a ministry or you just want to operate your home in the order they do in heaven, it is revelation, calculation, operation. And it doesn't matter whether you are you're running your family that way, ordering your family that way, um, your ministry or your business, you will prosper. Revelation is hearing from the Spirit of God first. If you have to make decisions in your life, you ask for revelation. That's why the Holy Spirit is there. Get in the Word of God. Ask Him to give. Sometimes He'll shine light and give you revelation on the Word of God. Sometimes He'll speak directly to you. Sometimes He'll reveal it to you in dreams and visions. But it will confirm on the inside of you what He told you He wanted to do. So you need revelation first. Don't just go by your own. Don't just make decisions out of your flesh. Actually, never do that. Get in an attitude and get in a place where you can hear God. Amen? And then you ask him. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to make the right decisions. You don't have to decide, you know, can I eat this piece of bread? That's ridiculous, but some people actually go that far. We have to live a balanced life. Amen? Or the world's going to just think you're kooky. If, you can't, if they can't kind of relate to you, you know, we are still people. We live in this world. I'm connected to heaven most of the time, but I still am in this world with people. I have no problem talking to the world about heaven or people, you know, with God. I don't have a problem. Don't think they're going to beat you up automatically unless you're going to beat them up. Don't take a Bible and hit them with it. So you get revelation. And then when the revelation comes, this is what I want you to do. This is what is going to happen. The next thing you need is calculation. Calculation is not, where am I going to get the money? That is not calculation. See, so many people don't even step out because immediately the enemy says, you have no money. Where are you going to get the money? The money's not there. That's crazy. You can't start. Yes, you can make plans, especially if he brings you revelation. The calculation is this. He says, you're going to build this building, you're going to produce these products, and the world's going to run after them and buy them all day long. He even gives you image of products. What do you do with that? You get a book. You write down everything he said to you in that revelation. Either record it, carry a little recorder, or just take a little notebook and say, this is what the Father said he wanted us to do. And then the calculation is this. What size building will I need? What piece of property will I need? How many people will I need to do the work? What kind of equipment will I need? What kind of decorations do I want? What supply do I need to have? How much is the insurance on this? Do I need uniforms or clothing? Do I need to get special things that are going to uh, project this image? What kind of marketing will I have? What kind of logo will I have? What kind of order do I have to have in order to get this stuff done? What is the order it needs to be done in? This is calculation. 
Almost nobody ever gets there because we have no money. That is not your responsibility. Your responsibility is you say you want something from God. He gives it to you, and it never goes anywhere because you're waiting on the money. Don't wait on the money. You can do all of the calculation. You can make drawings of what he showed you. That is calculation. The operation comes after you've done all the calculation. Take it before the Father. Say, look, I've got the revelation. I've got all the calculation planned out. This is what I need. Try to come up with some kind of a figure you think you need. It's going to be a whole lot more than that that he gives you. This is how you operate in this time, in the kingdom age, okay? We're taking authority and dominion. We are going to operate in the marketplace greater than any of the world is. Because the world will think that way. What is your plan? Get your financing. Then design all the stuff you need and figure it out. And then you can go forward. That is not heaven's way. That is not heaven's way. You get revelation. You do all the calculation. Don't leave anything out. And don't be cheap. Because holy is not cheap. We are representing heaven and this earth right now. And God does everything in excellence. The people you hire must operate in excellence. Make sure you do check them out. It's okay to check police reports. Now, if they're born again, spirit filled on fire for God, and that was in their past, totally ignore that. Okay? The Holy Spirit, will, the Holy Spirit can even give you your staff. He can give you names for your staff. Everything I'm telling you is exactly the way we are operating one quest. He will even give you interior design ideas for the inside because he wants heaven seen visibly on this earth. So don't be cheap. Don't think, well, I, can, I, can, I, I, I need 5,000 to start this. No. If you need 5 million to make it look good and great and market around the world, then you put that on that line that you're going to show God. Don't put 5,000. And then you stand there in faith and say, I received this as your plan and vision for my life. I'm even talking to households, businesses, or ministries right now. God the Father said, if you want to operate the way heaven does and you choose this pattern, God gives a pattern. This is one of the patterns for the kingdom age, how to operate in the marketplace. Most ministries, I'm just giving you this, most ministries on the earth that follow the pattern for the kingdom age will become for-profit ministries. They won't need the tax write-off because he wants you to make a profit for the kingdom. God did not invent nonprofit. What does the word say? We do that to get benefits from the government. Our economy isn't going to come from the government. Our economy is connected to heaven. You will have a heaven-based business, not a faith-based business. Because right now the world is taking advantage of faith. They have faith in a lot of other gods. And just because it's spiritual doesn't make it God. But heaven-based families, ministries, and businesses are going to prosper and flourish in the earth. If you, if you take the pattern, God has given a pattern right now for success. You first seek being holy. Okay? Because if you don't seek that, if you're not pursuing it, you're not going to get the revelation. God wants to give designs and patterns from heaven for those who are serious about knowing him and wanting him. He is number one. You are not, the, you may be a CEO on the title, but God is the owner of your corporation or your business or your self-employed person or your family or your ministry. God is first. Don't, isn't this exciting? See, our lives are going to be different because God is sending patterns for the kingdom age on how to be successful. 
revelation, calculation, and once you do the calculation, gave it to him, he is going to send the finances, and then operation is carrying all of that out. Don't ever forget, even when you're prospering, revelation always trumps calculation. In your family, in your ministry, in your business, if you hear from God to do something that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, you do that, that goes, comes over the calculation. Don't let the natural mind take control, okay? You trust God. Everybody say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Say, I'm going to run my race in the kingdom age. I'm going to be holy as you are holy. And I'm going to prosper and make a difference in my life. Get out of the way, devil. Because I'm going to burn. Amen. Thank you for letting me speak. Just one second. So y'all receive this woman of God. Come on, we can do better. Come on, we can do a lot better. Awesome. Awesome. And this reminds me when I was reading my Bible how when Jesus was walking with the people, they didn't know who he was. And he said, Didn't your heart burn? The word, the revelation, but the, the word of holy and love, it burned in me what she was saying like yes holy wants to be connected to god he wants you a relationship i kept telling you people this morning god wants your heart yeah. he doesn't want he doesn't want physical he want your he want all of you yeah. oh jesus i know you gotta go but you do Commander of the Royal Guard. What? Where is This is an image of. Uh, oh, he's right there. Okay. You're going to see an image of uh, Rex. It's his, his number. I So that I would be able to share patterns of the kingdom age. And what you heard was one of the things that was on that scroll. And during my 31-day fast, the scroll began to read itself to me. I've spent hours and hours with the Father, with the Holy Spirit, and he is sending the host of heaven. This is not a cloud. This is a supernatural being sent from heaven with a mission. With him came an army. Because I've chosen to live holy and be holy and receive things for the kingdom age, I now have an army assigned to me. Anyone who chooses to manifest for him, you will have so many hosts of heaven assigned to you. He is over the army and then the army began to pour in to the atmosphere. I have a lot of pictures of them. I don't have time to show them today. But there are many, many different beings that started appearing. Uh, even around my house in the atmosphere and the sky around my home, you can go outside and see them all the time. They're sent there for protection, for messengers, for scribes to record, and many different things. And I release them to go to complete the mission they have been sent for from God on my behalf but we need to learn that more and more in this time on the earth the world and the world itself will become more spiritual there's a lot of spirituality out there you need to know where it's coming from you need to be connected with the spirit realm with heaven and they're pouring into the earth by the millions waiting for those who will stand up and speak God's words live holy manifest for God 
They're there to war on your behalf. Amen? Amen. And the Holy Spirit made me promise I would show you that image so you could see something that's real and true. Amen? So they're here. They're in the unseen realm. But God's going to begin to open your eyes so you see and hear him clearly. And that's why he wants you to be holy. Say, be holy, be holy. as he is holy. As he is holy. It's, heaven culture. it's heaven culture. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, for our first Sunday, we want you all, if you will, we're going to take communion. And we want to ask you to conduct it. Well, yes, I will. Yes, I, I certainly <laughs> will. <be> honored. <laughs> it's holy. <laughs> I got an, um, an amazing revelation on communion about six years ago. I did hospitality in my church, and I always would run in there to get to take communion. And when I stepped in the doors of the sanctuary, they were passing the trays out. And I heard yell so loud into the sanctuary that it shook the walls. It is holy. It is holy. It is a holy thing. Don't take it lightly. Don't ignore it. It means something. It is powerful. It brings hope and healing and life to you. Receive it as his blood. It paid a price for your divine health. Receive it as your food for your life, for your spirit. It is holy. Receive it as a holy thing. So, Father, everyone say right now, Father, Father I, stand here I stand here and repent, and repent of any sins, any, sins, any, thoughts, any thoughts, any actions, any actions that, were not of you. that were not of you. I want pure hands, want pure hands and clean hands. Clean hands. I, want my heart I want my heart to be holy, to, be holy. to receive this day, receive this day a holy thing. A I take, it seriously. I take it seriously. I am honored, I am honored. And, privileged and privileged to partake, to partake. And, remember and remember what Christ did for me. Did for me. So, Father, right now, I thank you, God, that we take the elements that represent Christ and what he did in this earth. Also, Father, that it will put the body of Christ together in this room. It will remember, it will put our members together. We're putting our members together as one. You remember Christ. That means you're putting our members together for Christ. We're representing his body right now as we partake of this holy stuff. As soon as we've all received, just please let me know. Amen. The blood of Christ is a holy thing a lot of people don't want to talk about the blood you can't enter into heaven without it yes. it's the only way there the blood wasn't put there as a barrier to keep man out it was put there by the father as a barrier to keep sin evil and wickedness out of heaven if he lets you come without it heaven would be just like the earth that's what he told me yes he can't let the whole world come He's protecting heaven and eternity. That blood yes. covers and wipes away every sin, evil, and wickedness in you. That's why you have to receive Christ to enter into heaven. Amen? It's a holy thing. So, Father, right now, we hold up God, that bread that represents the body of Christ that was beaten that the sins of the world was put on that body, God. And we now are acknowledging that we were crucified with Christ as we partake. Go ahead and partake of that. I thank you, Father. <laughs> partake of that and just, just, you know, let it put you in remembrance of what he did. But also at this time, we are actually putting ourselves to remember is to take the members of the body of Christ and put them together. We're standing here as a body doing this together. We thank you 
We thank you, Jesus, for all that you did, that you had flesh put on your body. You changed your very image. You had to move from heaven to earth. You became poor that we might be rich in you. Glory. To take our sins, Glory. even while we were sinners, you died for thank us because you. of the love. So take, partake of the love, partake of the blood of Christ, and let it wash away any sickness in your body. Believe right now for sickness to be Glory. no longer tolerate the sickness Glory. in your body. Glory. You have something right Glory. here. The Glory. blood of Christ was given for you. Thank you, Father. Everyone say hallelujah. Glory. We worship you. We worship you. We thank you. Thank you, God. We love you. We thank you. Celebrate! Woo! Hallelujah! 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 Be holy! Yes. Everyone say it. Be holy! Be holy! As he is holy! As he is holy! And prosper! And prosper! And live! And live! On earth! On earth! As they do in heaven! Amen. Amen. Woo! Oh, I yeah, I forgot. We have to do the dance. Yes, the dance. You gotta hear. You gotta watch this now. Because I just heard the Holy Spirit say, "Celebrate." Okay. Said, so, "You want to take it now?" Yes, I would like to do that. Uh, we'll do that first. And I